Okay, so I wanted to make a little video here that might be of help for some people. This is going to be part of a brace of, of, of videos on this arcade cabinet. I've done a lot of work on this arcade cabinet recently. You can't really tell from the outside. It looks exactly the same as it did. But inside, almost everything has changed. But this particular video of that little brace really is going to be a technical video for people that want to do what I wanted to do, which was to play arcade games here running through Hyperspin, but also want to play newer games such as Soul Calibur 6, Street Fighter 5 that run through Steam on the PC and really do not work well with keyboard encoders. They don't like keyboard input. And so what you need to do, you need your panel, at least for players one and two, to simulate uh, a, a joypad, a joystick input. Okay, there's two ways you can go down with that. You can go down the direct input route, which is what old PC controllers often used to use and, and, and PlayStation controllers use, or you can use what I did, which is X input, which is the kind of format that at Microsoft likes. It's the Xbox format, and it seems to be the format that Steam likes the most. Every game is sort of configured nicely with that. It's just all the buttons will be set up right, because there's only kind of one way of mapping them, uh, so it knows what to expect. Whereas direct input, the buttons can be mapped all over the place. So I went down the route. Previously, this panel, I'll show you inside the panel in a second, was wired up using Ultimark iPack controllers, and it used two of these, which is, is the mini iPack controllers. I've gone away from these because it, they didn't do what I wanted them to do, quite frankly, which is give me the kind of um, games controller input. So what we've got in here now, all been rewired, totally rewired, and what you've got now is two iPack 2s. This one here connects to players... Uh, three and four and also provides a bit of power for the led lighting and for the leds for the trackball and then we've got this ipad 2 down here which as you can see there's no usb output coming out of this it's going to these ultimark console adapters and there's a little bit of confusion here and one of the reasons that i wanted to make this video is to help people out with the bits that I found really, really confusing. And quite frankly, they're confusing because for all the great products that Ultimate make and the support that Andy Warren gives, just look on the forums, everybody sings his praises. And indeed, I've emailed him a few times and, and he's responded to me. Um, the actual information on the website is pretty poor. Okay, so why would you use these console adapters? They do have a little mode button on them, so you can put them in sort of PlayStation um, it says PC stroke PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360 Switch. Quite honestly, if you're having them in PC stroke um, PS3 mode, I wouldn't bother buying them. Save your money because the iPack board can simulate that anyway. You don't need the adapter seemingly to do that. It can just output that uh, via the USB. It's really if you want that Xbox out output. And it doesn't tell you on the website, but I found Andy Warren explaining this on a forum. And what he said was, it turns out that you cannot have two X input controllers both coming out of the same USB. So you need a different way of doing it. And duly, that is what uh, he's done there. Okay, so that's why you would use those really. And I've got to say, I set it up and it works absolutely brilliantly. It really, really works well. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, to explain the next bit, let me put the, the WinIPAC software that you use to control uh, an iPack 2, amongst other things, but in this case, an iPack 2. Bear in mind, the iPack 2 that this one is finding is the iPack 2 that is connected to players three and four, it can't see this one now because this one isn't connected via a USB, but it allows me to talk you through it and tell you the bits that you need to know. The first thing that's really, really confusing on their website is that they talk about a firmware upgrade for game pads, okay? Um, and so immediately, if you're doing what I did, you think, oh, I'm gonna need that firmware update for game pads. Turns out that you don't. You only need the firmware update for gamepads if you want gamepad output to come out of here. And if you're going to do that, what you end up doing is, for each of these little, you wire all your wires in as you would normally, okay, for your joystick inputs, coin button, start button, and all your, your, your uh, switches, your buttons. And then on here, 
you can set each one as either a keystroke, a mouse button, or a gamepad button. Now you can see gamepads uh, grayed out because I haven't got the updated firmware with gamepad support here. But if I did, I could set each one of these as a, a direct input uh, gamepad uh, output for each one of these. And I could do it and that's very, very simple to do. But you really don't need to do that if you're gonna use these console adapters, if you're gonna use the console adapters, how it works is this, you will find a chart on his site, on the Ultimark site, where it shows you what each keystroke, what, 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 uh, what it is mapped across to, and what it needs to be mapped across to, to give you the right gamepad output. Now what I didn't understand is, and he explained this to me, again it isn't explained on the site, is that obviously in normal key mode, um, if you hit say one, the player one switch four, it'll give out a particular output. Let's say it's the V key, it, it won't be the V key, but let's say it's the V key. It also, what it actually also does is it also sets the V key to this. So what's happening is, if you were to hit that button, it would set the V key out under normal circumstances out the USB, but it's also setting the V key to this. I didn't know that. I assumed it was setting an X, some kind of X input output or something else to that. It isn't. It's setting a V key. And so the chart that he has on the site is telling you how this will respond to a V key or to a shift key or all these things. So it's telling you effectively what key it needs to see to give you the output that you want it to give. Right, so that's kind of how that works, because it didn't make any sense to me. Those charts always made sense for keyboard output, but I thought I'm not getting any keyboard output here. So why is it telling me the corresponding key presses? It's because it's sending key presses to these, and then these console adapters are interpreting those key presses. So you need to make sure it's setting the right key press for the button you want. Okay, the other thing that you need to do is that you need to go into the config tab on here. If you go onto the config tab on here, what you will find is enable expansion interface. You would need to tick that. I, I haven't ticked it here because again, this is the iPad for players three and four, but if I was to plug the USB in and show you this one, you would find that that is ticked. That is the thing you need to do for the console adapters, not get the gamepad enabled firmware. If you get the gamepad enabled firmware, it'll still work, it won't matter, but that isn't a necessity there. So what you then need to do is you then need to make sure your keys are right. And mine weren't because actually the order these are in are really odd. The switching order is something like, I thought it'd be something like one, two, three, four, five, six. It isn't. It's something like um, one, three, six, two, four, eight, or it might be one, three, eight, two, four, six, because how it does it, if you look on a, on a controller here, the numbers, it numbers them something like one, two, three, four, five, six, and then underneath seven, eight. That's right. So what you end up is the top row of buttons, these three, need to be two, four, and eight. And these three, touching that shoulder button there, need to be one, three, and six. Okay, so it's come to editing time here and I realised that I made a bit of a dog's dinner of that. I'm assuming you want to wire it so that it works for sort of Street Fighter 2 standard fighting arrangement, whereas the X key, the Y key and that top shoulder button will be light, medium and hard punch and the A key, B key and bottom shoulder button are going to be light, medium and hard kick. How you need to wire it, the pins you need to connect it to, the X, the Y and the top shoulder button need to be wired in to 2, 4 and 6, pins 2, 4 and 6 respectively and then the A key, the B key and the bottom shoulder button need to be wired in to pins, switch pins 1, 3 and 8. I hope that clarifies it. Okay, that's, that's effectively what you need to wire them into in terms of wiring them into the, the holes in here. Okay, those are the ones you need to wire them into if you want it to work. It didn't when I did it, and then the buttons were all over the place, um, and so I rewired them so they went into those holes, one, three, uh, one, three, six, and two, four, eight, or whatever it was that I just told you. You can check it using this software. Download that, it's a, a Windows app, Game Controller Test. 
there it is when you do that you press those two buttons the start and the menu buttons like that and when you do that it then allows you to test the buttons and if i press a button if i press that button look you'll see it comes up on there and i'll just press cycle through the buttons the six buttons and you can see they're all doing the function as the right trigger gone to 100 percent they're all doing that now what I found is for fighting games, that will cover everything, okay? There's a lot of fighting games sometimes use these with the shoulder buttons. It's only for combinations of, of these three buttons. So you can do them, for example, in Street Fighter. These two buttons is, is all the kicks and all the punches. So it's just the equivalent of pressing all those three or all those three. So you don't need them. But often in the menus, you may need those buttons. So this is where you need to use IPAC's shift function. And the shift function, the shift key, you allocate the shift key. And you're doing it in this program here. I'll show you that again. So you allocate the shift key there. I pack shift. If you set I pack shift, that will make that, whichever one you're on, if I chose that one, let's choose that. If I chose that, you can see that in this case, and this is, remember, for player three, so this is not running through the game control, it's the same thing. Under normal circumstances, that button is the enter key, but if I hold down what is the shift button, it will be volume down, okay? And then, if you want to set that button as the shift button, the button that you would hold, then you would click that. You can see the volume here. I'll just do the volume look. You can see how doing the shift works there. We could turn the volume and that's by holding down what is the shift key and pressing those buttons. Same thing works with this. So what I've done with this is I've set this button as the shift key. Now, why have I set this button? Because traditionally, player one start would be the shift key. Let me explain why it will save you the head scratching and hmm, that, that doesn't work that I had to deal with. When you press a shift key... When you press a normal button, if I hold this button down here, you will see as long as I hold the button right, it's connected, and as soon as I let go, it goes off. A shift key works differently. Let me show you how a shift key works, and to do that, I just have to switch, take that off there, switch controller across, and then get this going. Right, so again, that's the shift key, that isn't. I'll press this one first, and look at what happens. It stays illuminated. Now what happens when I press the shift key? Shift key pressed, nothing. When I let go of the shift key, bang, you get a flash. Okay, what that tells you is, for goodness sake, do not assign the shift key to a button that you may need to, to, to keep held down to perform a function. What I found again on Street Fighter V is to get to the menus when you're in game, you need to hold the start button down for a second or so. So it's actually impossible by setting that as the shift key to get to that menu. So I assigned a different shift key. Now how I've done it is, I've assigned the shift key such that if you hold that shift key down, and press these two buttons, or these two buttons for player two, what you get is, well, I'll show you, look. If I don't hold the shift key down, you're getting those two. If I hold the shift key down, you get the other two shoulder buttons. So that allows you, if you're going through the menus and options, it allows you to use those other two buttons in the time when you might need it, okay? So hopefully that'll give you a few tips if you're looking at installing one of these. I have found that this has worked really, 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 really well couple of extra little points what you might find is as you can see on here this is registered as one and that is registered the second light across as two windows does that or the device the ipad does that in coordination with windows as it boots into windows and according to andy warren on a forum i, I kind of understood what he meant it does depend upon which of these controllers is triggered first. And what I think is happening occasionally is that I'm booting into Windows and then moving this joystick or pressing this button at just the wrong time. And you can end up with these flipped over. And that registering as, as, as controller one and that registering as controller two. So make sure when you boot up that you, you move this controller first and then you won't end up with your controller switched around. The other thing that can be an issue is that if you're using um, a front end like Hyperspin for arcade games, it doesn't work very well with a games controller. 
and so it doesn't like this. I tried using XPadder, there's software like XPadder and, and Joy to Key, which can be used, which will take a, a gamepad input and convert it to keys. That solved that problem. But what it did mean is that then when I went into MAME, I couldn't really get that the, the, the XPadder software to stop working. And effectively, when I went and interrogated it, if I pressed up, for example, it was doing a joystick press up and doing uh, a keystroke at the same time. I wasn't really happy with that because uh, it was like a double press, effectively, instantaneous double press. So what I've ended up doing is not using these for hyperspin. These are not used... For, for going through the menu of hyperspin, I use player three because remember player three is using an iPad 2 just as a standard keyboard encoder. And you know what? That has solved the problem. So if I boot into hyperspin, I go through all the menus using this to go up and down through the menus, um, left and right to go through the letters, you know, to, to jump through. That's my favorites button. That's my genre button. And that goes up and down 50 games. That's to start a game and that's to exit hyperspin. That's how I have it set up. Then when I get into the game, obviously then that then becomes player one. And that then becomes player two because I set that up. I only use MAME. I only use hyperspin with MAME. I've set them up that way uh, within the MAME configurations. Okay. If anybody has any questions that they think I, I'm no expert on this, I'm just telling you what I, I learned because I had to learn all of this to be able to do this. And I didn't find all the information out there, really. It wasn't all in in an accessible digestible form and i could see lots of other people having the same head scratching moments that i was scratching it, it was causing me to scratch my head so if this helps anybody avoid those moments then it's been worth it okay take care